Today I wanted to go through the components of my steam condenser and show you how it works. So what is a steam condenser and why did I make one? So I have a pretty nice 1200 CFM range hood in here and it does a really nice job of taking out the smells and almost all of the water vapors. But I found that I was still getting condensation or, or whatever you want to call it dripping from the grates up here back into the kettle and I didn't want that. So I built this steam condenser. I wasn't able to get one from Brew Hardware, it always seemed to be out of stock for some reason. So I figured why not just build my own. So I got this information from Homebrew Talk. Uh, luckily lots of folks before us went through all the trouble to figure out the right size nozzles and adapters and things like that. So I pretty much just followed that and got the parts that I could and made it work. So how does a steam condenser work? And do you need a rain hood? No, you sure don't. Uh, if you don't mind the smells in your room, um, you know, but you wanna get rid of moisture, the steam condenser will take it out and will put it down your drain or into a bucket or something like that. So the theory behind this, uh, really simply, is that you have a nozzle spraying cold water uh, into here, and then that's creating a vacuum and it's converting it, the steam into water that's draining uh, into your sink or, or to a bucket. I chose to put the steam condenser on the side. Um, it worked well for me. I do uh, 10 gallon batches and, you know, at the most, I, I've probably had maybe 17 gallons. Um, I never come close to that lip there. So that just worked really well for me. If you really want to max out your kettle, uh, you could put it on top. Or, you know, you could even take it a step further and not build your own and just get the one from Spike. Uh, the, the theory is the same. So let's go through the components of the steam condenser. First up, we have the instrument tee. And it's different than a normal tee in that this piece here is short. That's going to get it up tight to the kettle. Um, and it's gonna, it's the right choice for the steam condenser. At the top here, I've got my spray nozzle, and that's gonna spray cold water into the body, and it's gonna be drawing in the steam from the kettle, and it's gonna be taking it out of the bottom into this drain tube here. More on that in a minute. Uh, on the nozzle, I've got a half-inch pipe connector, and then I've got this nice little tri-clamp uh, adapter with a half-inch female on either side from Brew Hardware. And then I've got a right-angle adapter here and uh, a cam lock. And then the cold water, what I've done here is taken a, I've tapped into my uh, cold water supply down there, and I used a dishwasher hose. That's why I sprayed it like this. And I found the right adapter to get that two half inch NPT. And then I put a standard ball valve. You'd probably see one of these guys on a fermenter. Uh, as a matter of fact, it looks a lot like the SS Brutech one without the barb, of course. And I got a cam lock on there. And that's just for my convenience. That way on, uh, when I'm not using this, I can disconnect it and I can hang it in the sink and I can take this thing completely apart. Then of course I've got a couple of um, high temp gaskets. Not that it really needs it, it doesn't, the only place it really gets hot is on the kettle. Uh, and then on the brew day, I've got this, uh, this tube right here and that drains right into my sink. So one important thing about these steam condensers is you don't want to drain it into a bucket or if you do drain it into a bucket, make sure that uh, the hose doesn't become immersed. You really need that, that air gap because that's what maintains the uh, vacuum coming from the kettle. So there you have it. That's an overview of my steam condenser. Thanks for watching.